Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Shake Sales. I'm your host, the sales evangelist at Mail Shake, Maggie. And today we're speaking with Amber Dibert, founder and performance coach at Amber Dibert Coaching. And I'm super excited to talk with her today. I know I say that every episode, but we have some great people on here, but specifically because we're talking about um, something that's really topical right now and, and coming up, which is the great reshuffle. And we're delving into navigating imposter syndrome uh, through that. So we'll learn a little bit more about that. But Amber, thank you so much for being here today. Do you mind thank taking you some time much. to... Yeah. Do you mind taking some time to introduce yourself? Of course. So my name is Amber Dibert. I work with the top 1% of sellers and helping with their mindset. If you feel like you are the biggest thing getting in your own way, <laughs> then I help you get out of your own way. There's nothing more frustrating to me than people who aren't living up to their potential because it's absolutely changeable of changing the way you think about things, changing your beliefs about yourself so that if, if you already know what you need to be doing, you're just not doing it. Like that's my sweet spot. Amazing. And there's so many sellers I talk to and I sometimes get in my own way too. So I think this is going to be really beneficial for anyone listening out there that has had those thoughts before. And I know in sales, it's common because we kind of deal with some rough stuff once in a while. Um, especially some things that can kind of F with our minds. <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to talk with Amber and to get right into it, I really want to focus on this term that I've heard you use. I don't know if you're the one that came up with it, but I really like the way that you put it, um, is the great reshuffle. So can you tell us a little bit more about what that is and how that, what's going on with it right now? Yeah, totally. So I feel like probably, I don't know, six months ago or so, there, people kept talking about this great reshuffle where everybody was switching jobs. It was before, it was pre like recession conversations, everything was great. We're coming out of the pandemic and everybody was switching jobs. And so now we're a few months out of that. And what I'm seeing is that now everybody has new jobs <laughs> and <laughs> they're adjusting to the discomfort of learning a new role, learning a new position, maybe a new industry, a new product and figuring out their new sales motion in this new place. Got it. Yeah. So a lot of imposter syndrome obviously can come up from that too. So what are some trends that you feel like sellers are going through when they're getting in these new jobs with all these things that are going on in the market? Yeah. So I guess I should probably define imposter syndrome really quickly. Mm -hmm. Imposter syndrome shows up when you're in a growth phase. Most people would, some people don't know what imposter syndrome is, but imposter syndrome is, uh, it comes in three flavors. It's either that you feel like a fraud. You feel like you're making it all up. People are going to find out that you don't know what you're doing. Um, the second one is that you feel like you just got lucky. You were just in the right place at the right time. And the people who put you in that position didn't know what they were doing. Um, and then the third one is that you downplay all your achievements. You feel like mm -hmm. you, anybody could have done what you did. It wasn't that big of a deal. There's nothing special about you. And all three of these combine to create what's called imposter syndrome, which is this feeling of like, I'm not supposed to be here. They're going to find out that I'm not supposed to be here. And actually I'm not qualified to be doing what I'm doing. And at any moment the shoe's going to drop or this is all like it, the bottom's going to fall out and I'm going to be mm. stuck with no job. <laughs> so it's interesting because with the great reshuffle, everybody switched jobs. So now not everybody, but most people are in a new role and so they're feeling the discomfort of learning this new role and feeling like I'm mm -hmm. making it all up. I feel like an imposter. People are going to find out. And now lay on top of that, all the layoffs that are happening. Every one yeah. of my clients is worried that they're going to get laid off, worried that they're going to lose their job. And so by downplaying their achievements of like, I'm not that special. There's nothing different about me that I don't necessarily deserve what I have. You layer on top the discomfort of learning a new job the worries about the recession, the worries about the layoffs and feeling like a fraud, feeling like you don't know what you're doing. And it just creates this huge cluster. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, just in general, like you said, starting a new job, I feel like there's probably, I mean, not everyone, but I feel like most people kind of get a slight sense of imposter syndrome when they do start one, even if they were really successful at a company before. But then you add all of these other things in the mix that are I mean, just shocking for someone who has been in their job, for example, for myself for the last three years, it's still a little uneasy. So it's a lot kind of going on. And, um, yeah, I guess like, what are some things that are coming up 
for your clients, I guess, like in these positions where they've switched jobs, like what are some things you're hearing them say? So a lot of it is just classic imposter syndrome. Another Mm -hmm. thing I didn't mention about imposter syndrome is that imposter syndrome also is very prevalent with people who feel like they're the odd one out. You're going to have some form of feeling like the odd one out, whether it's you're the only person with your background on your team. You're the only person who looks the way you do. You're the only one of your gender, the only one of your race, the only one of your orientation. You have a different um, experience than everybody else does. I work with a lot of uh, white males who feel an imposter syndrome. And the, one of the real primary reasons is that they didn't study sales in college or they didn't finish college. Mm-hmm. But it's so funny because nobody studies sales. <laughs> no. <laughs> People are like, well, I didn't, I, the, the term that I hear over and over again is I didn't come from a traditional sales background. And it, like, I, somebody please tell me what a traditional <laughs> I is because I don't think it exists. There's mm-hmm. no degree you can get in sales. And so people have all these ways of feeling like they're the odd one out. They don't belong where they are. Mm-hmm. And that creates a lot of imposter syndrome. And it's interesting that you bring that up. Like I haven't come back from the background of a traditional sales background. Do you feel like, I almost feel like it's kind of meta. Like that's maybe the reason why people are feeling imposter syndrome is because there is no clear path of like becoming a great sale. I mean, oh, that's such a good point. <laughs> right? Because like, there's yeah. Path. So everybody's like, well, I didn't take the path. Like, what's the path? There's no path. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, th- I felt it too. And I've said that myself, like, switching from a non SaaS sales role to a SaaS one. And I'm like, well, I've never been in SaaS before. And then I'm like, well, this is an entry level role. Like I hope the other people haven't been in SaaS before or whatever, but I felt that imposter syndrome too. Like I've never learned software before. And it's like, yeah, most sales reps hadn't before they worked in SaaS. So So that's a big problem right now because a lot of people who've switched jobs are trying to learn a new product. They're trying to learn Mm -hmm. a new company it's a different sales motion. We're still mostly remote. They're not selling in person. Mm. They're not sitting next to their team. They're not in an office learning from hearing other people on calls, being able to bounce ideas off of other people. And so it is creating a lot of extra stress, I think, for a lot of sellers. Yeah. And I don't want to derail us too much, but you brought up a good point, remote work. What would you say is like, I mean, the question seems obvious of, do you feel like remote work has an even higher kind of like chance of you having imposter syndrome? But what would you say is like the, uh, that gives it like people more imposter syndrome working remote? I think it is that it creates more of the sense of being the odd one out. Mm. You don't go to lunch with your peers. You don't sit next to them. You don't talk to them about what shows you're watching. And so you feel like everybody, you feel like you don't belong as much. Like you feel like everyone's yeah. hanging out without you when really everybody on the team feels the same way. Mm. So I Got think it. It, it creates a lot more. And by the way, I'm a huge fan of remote work. Me too. Um, <laughs> I think it's fantastic. I think the flexibility that allows you is fantastic, but it does kind of isolate you. And I think when you feel isolated, you start to have thoughts about yourself of like, well, other people don't like me or like, I'm not friends with them. Or like, I don't know. You kind of like count yourself out. Yeah, they don't deal with the same things I do or the same rejections. <laughs> um, and I know that that's like one of my favorite parts of work. I love remote work too, and I have been remote for the last three years. But one of my favorite things working remote as a sales rep is when someone was super mean to me or hung up, like turning to my friend next to me and making fun of that person or, you know, just kind of using lighthearted humor to be like, all right, on to the next. So, yeah, I think it's, you know, an important thing that that people – you know, just realize. And I think sales managers, I hear some do a great job of really trying to not force the same type of camaraderie, but just, you know, being vulnerable with their reps, which I think helps others out there too. Mm -hmm. And just normalizing it, making it for people to feel that way and making it apparent to everybody that everybody's feeling that same way. You're not, you're not the odd one out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And yeah, we've talked about, you know, people that are getting into these roles, they get these new jobs and, you know, they're feeling imposter syndrome right now. And one thing I've heard you say on past podcasts and just from what I see you post on LinkedIn is you can't feel imposter syndrome unless you're wildly successful. So can we just touch on that a little bit? Yes. <laughs> louder for the people in the back. Yeah. 
here's the thing about imposter syndrome. There are people who come to me and they're like, I felt imposter syndrome for so long. I think it's just part of who I am. I'm just the subpar human. They don't say that, but I know they're thinking that. And the thing about imposter syndrome is you only feel it when you've achieved your next level of success. Mm -hmm. So you probably felt like an imposter the first time you were out prospecting. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing. I've never done this before. This is a skill that I don't have. And you feel really uncomfortable as you're going about it. But you would never be able to experience that level of discomfort if you hadn't got the job. Yeah. If you hadn't been promoted, if you hadn't got a new job, if you got a new project, a new role. And so, like, first and foremost, the only way you can feel imposter syndrome is if you're a wild success. Mm -hmm. If you're the kind of person who's complacent and stays in the same role for 20 years, you'll never feel imposter syndrome because you're not growing. Mm -hmm. So from the way that you just put it, it's, it's scarier to not feel imposter syndrome. <laughs> for many of my clients, right? So I work with people <laughs> who are like, I felt imposter syndrome so much. I'm like, well, what I know about you is that you're very driven mm -hmm. and you are, you are like immune to being complacent, not immune, but you hate the idea of being complacent. Complacency to you feels like a death sentence and you mm -hmm. want to grow and you want to learn. And so what I'd love to tell my clients is when you feel that imposter syndrome, that's a sign to you that you're in your sweet spot. Mm -hmm. You're growing. It's no longer a problem. It's like a sign to you. Like, this is the kind of person I am. I love to learn. I love to grow. And so I feel a lot of imposter syndrome and that's okay. And it's a sign to me that I'm in my sweet spot. This is exactly where I want to be. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. And I, I love the way that you reframe it like that is, yeah. And it's almost, like I said, it's scarier to not feel that imposter syndrome because then you just know that you're being complacent or maybe you're not taking those risks because of the fear of it too. And you're just sticking with what might be easier to you or feel more comfortable. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, like I, people, there are people who like to be complacent and thank yeah. you for them mm -hmm. because the rest of us want to keep growing and we need somebody to keep doing those jobs. <laughs> like it's totally to complacent, but if you're the kind of person that it feels imposter syndrome, you're not the person that wants to be complacent. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, you, you put it really well there. And so talking about the first step of like reframing it. So people identify that they're feeling these feelings of imposter syndrome, reframing it, reframing it, just like you beautifully said of that you're wildly successful. Um, and I'm excited most to hear about this, but what are some steps that sales reps can do right now or use right now uh, to help overcome this imposter syndrome at this time of the great reshuffle? So I think a lot of it is just reframing the way you think about it mentally, which is great for me because I'm all about like, to me, thinking about it differently is way easier than like actually doing exercises to overcome it. <laughs> um, there is one exercise you can do, which is writing down all your achievements. If you're the kind of person who downplays a lot of your achievements or felt like it was just luck that you got where you are, make a list of all the things that you actually did to achieve the success mm -hmm. that you've had and reflect on that. And when people think about downplaying, they'll say like, well, anybody could have done it. And that actually is true a lot of the time. But the thing that's not true is that not everybody would do it. Mm -hmm. Not everybody would go through all the hard work and all the difficulty and all the challenge and struggles that you went through to achieve the success, even if they could have, right? Mm -hmm. So that still differentiates you. The other thing I really like to think about with imposter syndrome is I love to compare because I feel like it's mental growth and I love to compare it to physical growth. If mm -hmm. you, let's say you're like killer at, CrossFit. You're so good at CrossFit. You're in your element, you're in your zone. And then you get thrown into a Zumba class <laughs> and suddenly you feel very uncomfortable. Like I, I'm the odd one out. I don't know what's happening here. Uh, like I shouldn't be here. People are going to find out that I don't know what I'm doing. They're going to kick mm -hmm. me out of the class and you feel very uncomfortable. I think that the discomfort that you feel in a new job is same as the discomfort you feel if you're doing a new workout. Hmm. And what I love to think about is I love to compare um, imposter syndrome to the feeling of soreness you get in your muscles. Like you yeah. know that a workout went well if you feel kind of sore after. And depending on the level of soreness, usually for me, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's working. Like yeah. I, I worked hard and it's working. And I think about imposter syndrome being the equivalent of that muscle soreness. Mm -hmm. The soreness is not comfortable. It's very uncomfortable. Yeah. But it's a sign to you that it's working and that you mm -hmm. are in your sweet spot. And I think of imposter syndrome is the same way. I think what the misconception is or where people go wrong is that they frequently 
use imposter syndrome to confirm the fears that they have about themselves of I'm not good enough. I'm not cut Mm -hmm. out for this. I'm not going to be able to be successful. And the imposter syndrome shows up and they're like, see, there you go. That's the evidence. Like Mm -hmm. case closed. This is it. And so they use the imposter syndrome against themselves. But I think if you can switch the way you think about it and use imposter syndrome as a way to confirm that you're in your sweet spot, this is where you want to be. It's working. And then the last thing I'll say about imposter syndrome is that it literally cannot last if you keep going. Mm -hmm. So think about the first time you prospected and cold called. You felt like a wild imposter because you didn't know what you were doing, but you did it enough times that you no longer feel like an imposter at that. Mm -hmm. As long as you take action and continue to build that skill, pretty soon you'll have that skill and you'll no longer feel like an imposter anymore. So if you feel like an imposter at something right now, this new growth thing, this new thing in your company, a new product, you're learning the team, whatever it is, just keep going. And it is inevitable that imposter syndrome will go away. Mm. Most people are like, but I feel it all the time. Like, well, okay, you must be growing all the time. <laughs> yeah. Like another problem. But it's also <laughs> a sign to you that like you're learning new skills. As long as you keep doing that motion, you're going to imposter syndrome cannot last. Yeah. And first thing that you mentioned is like having the appreciation for the past too. It's so easy for when I was doing demoing, I've done 2000 demos. I would still get imposter syndrome if there was a new feature we had, like it would drive me nuts. Like, Oh my gosh, I don't know how to demo. You know, I've been doing this for so long, but nothing. And it's because that new feature came in and I'm like, I need to learn how to, you know, effectively talk about it. So I love what you said of just writing down those accomplishments, because I think that's where we can really like appreciate it. Even in my own phone, I have like a file of all my screenshots of things that I've done, like hitting quota or an email that someone sent me or something like that, just so I can refer back to it. Uh, so I think that is super important just for like not combating it, but just knowing like, Hey, this imposter syndrome is normal. I'm successful. I'm in my sweet spot, like you said, and that it'll pass. And I love that you compare it to the soreness because I think we've already identified anyone who feels sore feels pretty great about it. I don't hear people saying like, unless you worked out way too hard where you hurt your body. Um, but yeah, it's like, we've recognized and you don't have any reason to feel sore. Yeah. yeah. I'm more of like <laughs> not exercise while I sore. <laughs> you wake up sore because of a random position you were in. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a different story, but you know that it's working. It's like a sign of that growth. And I think if we can um, associate it with the same thing when it comes to our jobs or, you know, something um, mental happening to us, like imposter syndrome, that, you know, we can really shift that there too. But I guess I have kind of a challenge to something that you said, because you said imposter syndrome is when you feel like you're in that sweet spot. Are there ever scenarios where, you know, someone's feeling imposter syndrome, but maybe they're growing in the wrong direction? Does that make sense? Like it isn't their sweet spot. That's such a good point. And so I have a peer, Ali Rizaskos, I'm going to say her name wrong. You can find her on LinkedIn. She calls herself (laughs) the imposter syndrome coach. And that Mm -hmm. is exactly what she focuses on. Sometimes you feel like an imposter because you're like, you're living the wrong life. This isn't the life you should be living. And so I don't focus on that as much. Allie focuses a lot on that. So I love to send people over to her. Um, I focus more on if you have a goal that you're trying to attain, you feel like you're in the Mm -hmm. right place. You just feel like you're getting in your own way. But Mm -hmm. yeah, there's definitely a part where it's like, I feel like an imposter because like, I, this isn't, this isn't the life that I want actually. Gotcha. Question. (laughs) whole other interview with someone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But awesome. No, because I, I just heard you say sweet spot. And I was like, I wonder if that ever comes up. So awesome. We'll follow Allie out there too. And Amber, thank you so, so much for, for talking with me today about imposter syndrome, how you've helped people through it right now during the great reshuffle. Um, where can people follow you? Where can they learn more about your coaching, the courses that you have out there? Tell us everything. Yeah. So you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm very active there. Um, look for Amber Divert. Uh, you can also check out my website, amberdivert.com. And then I also have a, a course that will teach you everything about how to manage your mindset. And you can find that at managermindset.io.
Awesome. Pretty easy there. We'll follow Amber on LinkedIn. I'm following her right now and she gives some great tips out there for sales reps who are most of the audience that listens to us too. So, and then contact her if you want um, more coaching or just any of her courses there. But Amber, thank you so, so much for being on here today. Of course. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Maggie. Yeah. And thank you everyone for listening to another episode of Shake Sales. We'll catch you next time. Bye. 